So it's been made pretty clear, at least what's been reported anyway, that the Chicago Bulls, while there is a bevy of interest in Alex Caruso from teams across the league, the Bulls have made it apparent to GMs around the NBA they're not interested in trading Alex Caruso. They have shut down those calls, and I explained in a prior video that I'm actually okay with this approach, even though I know a lot of Bulls fans don't agree with it, and it's for a few reasons. One being that AC provides so much value to the Bulls both on and off the court, he's always been an elite defender but has even elevated his game this season to being an efficient player on offense, one of the better 3 and D players in the league. And I can't emphasize enough the importance culture plays into a team and their success. A guy like Alex Caruso, whether you're contending, rebuilding, staying average, whatever, he can be that culture setter for any team that he plays for. That mentor, that hype man, that energizer on the court. And I just don't think you can underestimate that regardless of the Bulls situation, their timeline, do they rebuild, do they not rebuild, and still try and win. Now, AC's value is so much higher than people give him credit for, and if the front office isn't liking the offers or they're unwilling to move him barring an insane haul, that's kind of the way it should be. Teams need to be making big offers if they want Caruso because his value dictates that. And I'm not in the game of, you know, just trade a player just to trade him because you're tearing things down. And while some will say, well, his value is at its peak right now, you wait longer, his value could go down and he could walk in free agency. Sure, that doesn't mean you should move him for less than his value, especially when it is at its peak. And as I've said before, I'm only okay with the Bulls trading Alex Caruso if it's two first round picks at a minimum. Anything less than that, it's not worth it in my opinion. Keep Alex Caruso, have him be the veteran voice and mentor to the young guys in a rebuild and try and re-sign him. Keep him around because even if his game falls off a bit, the value he brings off the court is still going to be there. And so if you asked me, do I believe that Caruso will be traded by the deadline? No, I don't think he will because, well, one, the Bulls have said they're not going to trade him, but more so because I don't think teams are going to be willing to shell out a haul to get him. Like even for some of the most desperate teams that need a big impact winning player to get them to win a title, they're not going to hand over multiple first round picks to do so. That said though, I couldn't help myself when it comes to messing around with the trade machine and thinking about the only trade scenarios in which I would be okay with the Bulls moving Alex Caruso, and it's what I'll be sharing in this video. So what's going on everyone, you're listening to Bulls Central here, hope you're well doing well. Now trading Caruso is actually quite easy when it comes to matching salaries because he's on such a team friendly deal. It's not like trying to find a trade partner for Zach Levine where you have to come up with $40 million in incoming salary. For Caruso, you can include one or two players and young players on rookie deals and make the trade successful. But in this first scenario, and again, I'm mainly thinking of teams that are still trying to make a title push, even though for the Warriors, I think that ship has sailed and it's possible they don't even make the playoffs at this rate. But I have two with the Warriors, actually. This first one is Alex Caruso heading there for Kaminga. Brandon Podzeminski, I believe is what you call him. I'm just going to call him Pods. And a first round pick in 2027, which mind you, any future first round picks for the Warriors that far out could very well be interesting once Steph Curry retires or starts to decline. Now, you're probably saying, well, hold up. This is only one first round pick. You said you needed minimum of two. Yes, but I'm also trying to be as realistic as possible. And with the Warriors sending two very young players with upside in Kaminga, former number seven overall pick, and Podes, who is a rookie and has actually looked very nice for the Warriors, not a chance they're going to be including two picks also in the deal. But in the second one with the Warriors, I did include two picks, 2026 and 2028, and flipped out the young players for Gary Payton. The value here is really the picks, not necessarily Gary Payton, although Payton, like Caruso, is a very scrappy defender great athlete, uh, but he's older, 31, and he's been injury prone. But for two first round picks, yeah, I would make this deal. And of course, we've got to do a trade with the Lakers because we all know the Lakers are trying to get Alex Caruso back. Uh, it says failed because Gabe Vincent cannot be traded until the 15th, which is actually now passed, but I took the screenshot the day before. But in this one, the Bulls would get Gabe Vincent a first in 2029 and two seconds. The reason I didn't have uh, it be two firsts is because the pick in 2029 is actually the only eligible draft pick the Lakers can trade, first round draft pick, I should say. So no, I'm not obsessed with this deal, but getting three picks, 2029 20, unprotected, and also Gabe Vincent on a fairly team-friendly deal, it gives the Bulls shooting, so I would begrudgingly live with this one. Uh, this one is interesting because I want to do one with a team that isn't necessarily a title contender, but they're kind of on the up and up. Uh, they've been one of the league's biggest surprises, a team that has been incredible on offense, but also horrible on defense. And so adding a hard-nosed defender in the point of attack that would enable them to keep up their pace and turn that defense into offense would be huge for them. And so while I think most will say the Pacers, who are still building, they're not going to give up future assets for someone like Caruso. 
I think there is a world where they might try and make a push for him if they feel they really are right on the cusp, but they have to shore up their defense in order to truly start competing. And so in this trade, it's not two first round picks, but you're getting a young lottery pick from last year and a rookie standout from last season in Benedict Matherin, who has kind of gotten off to a slow start so far this season, but I really like his game. Very dynamic, athletic score, hustler, hard worker, only 21 years old, will continue to get better. And then the Pacers first round pick in 2025, which again, a pick in 25 is key for the Bulls because they owe their own pick to the Spurs in the DeMar sign and trade. Top 10 protected, but still a pick that they owe and they can't trade as a result of it, nor can they actually trade picks in 24 and 26 because of the Steffian rule. So I would do this trade because you're getting a young stud and a first round pick for a team. Yeah, they're likely going to make the playoffs, but I can see that pick being more in the middle of the first round. I did another one with the Pacers where I did actually include two first round picks because rather than getting Mather in the deal, you're getting TJ McConnell, who I like because he's a hustle player and can shoot, but he wouldn't be part of the Bulls long term plans. Uh, you mainly would have to include him here for salary. But for the Bulls also getting Isaiah Jackson, a young center with some upside, I mean, that's the other thing. For the Bulls, if you're going to tear things down, they need to start thinking about their future of their center spot, with both of their centers, starter and backup, being in their 30s. And so having a young big like Jackson could pan out for them in the long run. And it's possible you could see Jackson thrive, who isn't getting as much playing time on a Pacers team that has Miles Turner. And then, of course, two first round picks. That's the key. That's what you want if you're going to be trading Alex Caruso. Let's do one more, and this one we're going to be doing with the Knicks. The Bulls are getting Hartenstein again. Thinking about the future of your center spot also helps with matching salary. Quentin Grimes, who I think is actually a really nice player with upside and a player who has recently expressed his frustration with his current role on the Knicks. Uh, I didn't include two first round picks because you're getting a younger player in Grimes, but the first pick is more immediate for this upcoming draft, and then also a second round pick, which the Bulls don't have many of those, also in the upcoming draft in 2024. Tibbs would love Alex Caruso. Fits the mold of everything he appreciates and wants in a player, helps the Knicks in their defense, and for the Bulls, two young-ish players and two picks that are going to be coming to you now to help the rebuild, again, in the event the Bulls go down that route. Now, there are more teams that likely would be great suitors and options for the Bulls, teams like the Heat, Sixers, both potential contenders, both teams that would have assets that the Bulls would want. I didn't include the Bucks because they don't have a first round pick to send, so they're out even though Caruso would actually fit very well with the Milwaukee Bucks. And of course, there's always three and four team trade deals that could get a favorable package for the Bulls, but I wanted to throw some quick ones together here because trade season is getting kicked off, ladies and gentlemen. Most of the league can now be traded now that we've past that December 15th mark where recently signed players uh, can now actually be moved. That will go up even more by January 15th. So who knows, maybe we'll see a Zach Levine trade announced any day now. But in the meantime, let me know what you guys thought of some of these trades for Alex Caruso. What trades would you be comfortable with in moving Caruso? Let me know in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.